As a lifelong Sega fan, I have grown to appreciate the Sega Master System. It's kind of overlooked here in the United States, but it had several classics released on it. Uh, the, one of the best RPGs come to mind, Fantasy Star, but there's others like OutRun in the Wonder Boy series. You're gonna have your favorites. We're not talking about any of those today. We're talking about the worst of the worst, bad games for the Sega Master System. And I know you're gonna have your picks. I definitely have mine. I've done an ongoing series of bad video games across many different platforms, handhelds, and in the future, probably gonna be exploring some bad computer games. And so today's video is gonna focus on the Master System. And I'm gonna share with you what I think are five of some of the worst games on its library worldwide. Sit back, relax, you may wanna grab some popcorn. Here we go. Another classic on the Master System was Alex Kidd and Miracle World. In fact, this was Sega's iconic mascot before Sonic for the Master System. And they recently remade this and I did a video on that, a true classic. Someone at Sega thought it'd be a good idea to take a Japanese exclusive game reskin it for an Alex Kidd game and release it worldwide. What you get then is Alex Kidd and High Tech World. The low point of the series and I'm gonna show you why. Simple story, you're just trying to get to a nearby town to play an arcade game. Okay, I can, I can deal with that, that's cool. There's four levels of the game and the first level is truly one of the worst first levels I've ever played in any game. Essentially, you're going around and picking up eight pieces of a map to high-tech world. And so uh, you're going around, you have to take a test. Uh, you know, as a kid, I would be frustrated with this. Uh, navigating this area is frustrating. Going up and down stairs is challenging. And to make it worse, there's things in the game that are instant kills. You try to put on this armor here, it'll automatically end the game for you game over back to the start square one. Oh my goodness there's only four levels of the game there's really only two action levels and they're average at best if you can get past that first level luckily there is a password feature but this is not a good game avoid it one of the worst Alex Kidd games out there truly terrible if you grew up in the 80s you might remember ALF and that was a TV show from 86 to 90 with this late release tie-in video game for the Master System. I didn't grow up playing this game. I heard of its legendary bad status and so kind of went in this blind not playing it before and holy cow, oh boy. So you're, you're gathering various items, you pick up a cat, yay, and I didn't know what to do when I first started. So your weapon in this game is a salami and you're exploring various uh, areas and the hit detection is truly terrible. Uh, it, it, you know, you can get hit by these stupid bats over and over again. It's gonna kill you multiple times. I can't tell you how frustrated I was trying to play this game and progress in the cave area. The range of your weapon is terrible and the hit detection of this game is is truly on its own level it is just absolutely atrocious uh the bats are going to hit you and and kill you multiple times okay and then you have these open areas where these bikers come around and it's going to kill you and got these creepy looking fed agents and of all things you only have five lives and one continue with no sound effects that, that, I mean, I can't, I can go on and on about how bad this game is. There's also some items in the game. If you purchase them at a shop, insta kill. And so I hate that. I hate this game. Avoid it. Maybe platformers are not your thing. And so I had this in my collection, F-16 Fighting Falcon. I've heard a lot about this game. So finally wanted to revisit it and check it out and see how well this flight sim ish holds up to today you're greeted with a nice little title screen and you have 10 different levels and get this you don't land in this game you just fight migs in the air and that's it so on a sim level this is very simple it does use two controllers uh, the second controller is for throttle and countermeasures i don't really have a problem with that um the, the big issue with this game is finding an enemy 
and just not being fun whatsoever. The graphics are reduced to kind of a grid based, uh, you know, the, the land is represented by, by a kind of a wireframe grid and there's only a couple different colors representing day and nighttime conditions. It, it doesn't matter because this game fails on a simple aspect of not being able to represent, I think, the basics for a flight sim. Now, there's a bunch of stats and information on the screen to try to help you out, but it just boils down to trying to find a MiG using your guns and missiles to take it out and rinse and repeat to the next level. In fact, I beat the first level, didn't even know I progressed to the second one. It just is truly choppy. I think this game tries to be adequate but unfortunately due to the hardware limitation it fails on many different aspects one of the worst console flight sims to be released another favorite of mine on the master system is the original shinobi as i feel it was a perfect balance between gameplay and difficulty and also amazing bonus stages as well as excellent enhanced music the cyber shinobi also known as shinobi part 2 is a game we did not get here in the United States and one that I didn't grow up with so I wanted to check it out and see how it played. I'm a big fan of action platformers especially if you're controlling like a ninja and with that title Cyber Ninja this should be awesome right? Well unfortunately it fails miserably choppy animation choppy scrolling the one cool thing about this game is when you defeat an enemy they like burn up but you know it's truly terrible. The, the, another another example: the the range of your weapon is is, is very small. Uh, you know, as you progress, you have to kill all the enemies to progress in this game. So you, and and so you're, you're you're getting hit over and over again. The other thing is your HUD, your HUD, heads up display, is taking up about a third of the screen. So the action area of your screen is very small. Jumping is really awkward in this game and, and I found myself uh, having a hard time even progressing over crates, not getting hit by enemies, which is going to happen over and over and over again. And because you have to take out the enemies, you can't just avoid them. And so uh, everything about this game is truly broken, especially for a Shinobi game. You know, for me, especially growing up with Sega Genesis games, when I saw Shinobi in the title, I knew I was in for an awesome experience as I'm a big fan of the series, but this one is truly broken. As you can tell right here, my character got like stuck until I died. Some people might be asking, well, what about the great sports series? There was seven games released here in the United States, many average at best. Some would say great ice hockey because you have to use the sports pad uh, to control it. Um, you know, some would say you need to include one of these on this series of games. But then I heard about this rare sports game that did not make it here in the States, and that's Championship Hockey, and it brings bad to a whole new level. You have various aspects of the game you can manage, you know, different quarter lanes, different teams around the world. I'm playing U.S. versus Canada. Uh, the control is truly awful in this game. The camera often doesn't keep up with the action. A lot of times you're not knowing what's going on. And what's worse though is scoring goals in this game. You can make a shot on a goal and it looks like it's not even going to go in and it goes in. And so uh, playing this game is truly an awful experience. One of the worst hockey games I've played ever very simplistic sound effects and it's just like half a game it, it, you could truly tell that this was sneezed out at the last minute uh, a late release for master system and it, it's it's truly an awful hockey game you know I, I i've played a lot of hockey games in my life i like hockey games going back to old school atari 2600 i found this game to be truly broken and one to avoid about halfway through a game, I was able to score nine goals against an opponent, many of them from far, far away, impossible shots that should have never went in. So, 
those are my picks for some of the worst games on the Sega Master System. You're going to have your picks. I want to hear your thoughts and place them in the comments below. Let's be positive about it. And I want to hear your backstories connected to some of these games. I love hearing the stories people had where they got a, a bad game for a gift or were excited about a game and it ended up being terrible. And so there's a lot of bad games out there and I'm gonna to continue to cover many more platforms, including classic computers, hopefully in the future. And so if I haven't covered your console favorite yet, don't worry, I'll eventually get to it. So if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and click the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. This is the immortal John Hancock. Thank you for watching. You have a good day.